Kia ora everyone, I hope everyone is well. If you're new to this channel, then the best thing to do is to sit back, belt up and hold on. For the rest of you, welcome back. <laughs> and now let's get on with this show. This episode is upon a DC who became famous on a TV interview. This is her hair. Its name is... You may have seen this DC on Jimmy Can't Swim a while back, but recently our mate over at Crime Circus, <laughs> and he is a crazy dude. He is a true crime clown. <laughs> and uh, he managed to get hold of the first interview that Genius here did. And I have been waiting for so long for that interview to come out. And now that it's here, I'll be using that in this video. So shout out to our mate, <laughs> the true crime clown over at Crime Circus. Anyways, let's get back to it. And by back to it, I mean, let's get back to the backstory. Back in 2011, DC was a law student at Mercy University in Georgia, and that's from the good old US of A. Now, our DC is a fantasist. He lives in a fantasy world that he's created. And this is obvious because uh, he actually used to go and ask girls out on dates and actually expected that one of them might have said yes. Like I said, a deep, horrific, twisted, warped fantasy. Because look at him. Look at him. He looks like Streisand. Now, DC here is one of those psychos who starts off panty sniffing and then breaks into dormitory rooms on the campus and plays with himself while walking around in the nude. Now, he does that when people aren't home, because if they were home, they'd probably be thinking, what the fuck is Barbara doing walking around my place in the nude, playing with the, oh my god, she's got a really, really tiny penis. Oh wait, it's not Barbara at all, it's that freak from next door. So anyways, back to DC, the fantasist, panty sniffing, Streisand lookalike, was living next door to this young lady, who also happens to be our victim. Her name is Laura, Laura Giddings. And she was truly a ray of shining light. It was just unfortunate, very unfortunate, that she's living next door to a dangerous, sick, warped, twisted pervert that lives in a fantasy realm who just happens to sniff panties. And did I mention that he had a really small penis? Uh, anyway, back to it. So um, this DC took an infatuation to our Vic. Now, on the 26th of June, our Snivler, because that's what we call him, and soon, you shall see why, put his J for Genius plan into action. So, what was this plan about this fantasy? Well, old Snivler thought that he'd break into Lauren's apartment with her being there, then would sexually assault her and somehow leave, go home, like next door, and be done with it. Scott Free, whoever Scott is, so old genius here, first off, wanted to make sure that Lauren was at home. So he stuck a camera on a pole to look through the window. So now he knows that she's at home, but even better, she's alone. Now, here's something. Here's part of the fantasy and the way that these fantasists, DCs, Thing. In his head, in DC's fantasy, they take signs which aren't there and interpret them to be signs that Lauren likes him and wants him to do things. And this would have happened most likely on that night. Oh, DC here, he would have had it in his mind that if she was out, then she didn't want to go through with it. But if she was home, then that was a signal to him that she really wanted him to come over and sexually assault her. And this is the mind of the fantasist. And that's one of the reasons why these DCs are so dangerous. Anyways, back to DC. So let's go into part two of J. Virginia's plan. And that was to wait until Lauren was sleeping. And then he put on a mask and this is all part of the craziness they think that it's a perfect plan that Lauren wouldn't recognize him because he had a mask on because that's about as real in the real world as Lauren thinking oh my god I'm being burgled by Barbara fucking Streisand so anyways back to the plan so old genius puts a mask on and then creeps like a creepy thing into lauren's room and then starts attacking her and lauren recognizes amazingly enough that it's dc 
and apparently she yells at him to stop and DC puts plan B into play which is now he's going to viciously strangle and murder Lauren and then he's going to drag her to her bathtub and then he's going to dismember her with a hacksaw and then he's going to put her body parts into plastic bags and then to wrap up plan B he's going to put those body parts in those bags into the trash bins so the rubbish collector can come and collect them the following morning then he pulled down his pants pulled a pair of panties put them on his head like he's wearing a mask like the same mask made of panties that they found in his room later on and then he just resorted back into his realm of fantasy thinking that he had committed the perfect crime <gasps> a genius you know i always say it but then again it's because it's, <laughs> it's fucking true man dc's only kill the good guys or what we call them at the universe the g's and here's an example for you in regards to lauren being a g and that is that nobody really liked sniveller because well look at him he's sniveller and if you weren't part of his fantasy world then you weren't in his world at all and lauren being the lovely kind-hearted person she was would actually invite sniveller along to social events to try and get him to get involved and to get friends now that for a complete stranger to do that for you just speaks volumes about the type of far now or family that lauren came from and the kind of person that she was and the kind of victims that these dcs target and it's just a waste like they don't go target the bad guys they don't go target the big mean people out there no let's always target the kind person the good guy and that's what makes these dcs pieces of murderous filth anyways back to sniveller and how he got that name inside our dc universe and that is because he became famous on tv news so back to the backstory. Now, once Lauren had gone missing, friends and farm owls started to freak out. So the police got involved and they started prelim investigations to find her. Now, genius here joined the search parties, as DCs do, and acted all worried and concerned and shit. Now, here's the thing. 5 brought Sniveller into the station and was interviewed and that's the interview the police interviewed that our mate the true crime clown has posted up on his site so make sure if you want to go see it all go see it because it is again funny once you've seen this episode of course now what you'll notice in this interview is nothing there just seems to be nothing untoward or anything that would raise your suspicions that this dc should be looked at as a suspect nothing at all until there is now now let's take a look at this interview interview one of our geniuses master plan 10 hours before the stroke technique gets kicked in she's been home all week right all weekend mm -hmm. and uh you ain't been out of town or anything has anybody come stay visit you while you were home no you didn't have no friends over mm -hmm. Anybody see you this weekend that you've been home? Uh, I, I don't know of anyone that would have seen I mean, you me. hadn't taken any trash out this weekend or anything? Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, the reason why the cops asking about the trash is because they've already found the body. Where you been eating at? I eat mainly in. I mean, I've got... I mean, did you go to Kroger, the grocery store, or anything this weekend? Ah... Uh, because you said that you normally shop at Kroger and Batemansfield. Yeah, I mean, I, I stockpile as a habit of mine, so I have a bunch of food that I just eat off of. So what you're telling me today is like you just stayed in your apartment all weekend? I mean, with bar prep, we, we just work on it and work on it. And What's bar prep? The bar in July, to the Georgia bar okay. attorneys. We're, I'm in the Barbary. Is that something you do over the computer, or do you have to physically go to a class? Well, we have lectures typically in the morning. Uh -huh. We have been having them over at the law school initially, but then the NCDC, the National Criminal Defense College, they came in and they took over the entire law school for a couple of weeks, and we got moved over to the main campus. So you, you've actually went to a class last week? 
Oh yeah. I mean, okay, I'm, so you actually left your house last week, but yeah. this this past weekend, which would have been the 25th of June, was Saturday, 26th is Sunday. You just stayed in basically the whole day. Yeah, I mean, we didn't have class on the, the Friday. Uh, we had no class on that. And Saturday, Sunday, I just stayed in. Okay, and you never looked out and saw your next-door neighbor, Lauren, leaving to go jog or you never heard her front door shut or anybody out there talking until you looked out and saw her friends out there which would have been last night yeah i heard garen and ashley outside and opened the door to see what was going on they were about to go to law school i guess i called over and found out that Lauren had been missing now, this next part's classic. You see, everyone on campus, the cops went to and says, can we search your place? And they gave them consent to. Everyone except for Snivler. And this next part's the cop putting pressure on Snivler, making it look like that old Snivler looks like he's the only one who's not going to do it. So he bows to the pressure, breaks and gives in. It's gold. Okay. And uh, I had asked you in your statement because I... I've asked everyone that's living in that, that lives in that apartment complex if it would be all right for us to search their apartment, give me consent to search. I've explained to you that you can be there when I'm doing this, that I'm not going to just, if you give me permission, run over there and search your apartment without you being there, correct? I mean, you understood that, right? Yeah. I'm asking that I would be there and that uh, no one's going to search your apartment without you being present, right? Mm -hmm. And in your statement, you stated that you did you didn't want me to do that or i'm trying to find out where you yeah i mean, i've got several firearms that i own and i i'm always i don't want other people well, how many firearms do you have uh i've got a semi-automatic rifle and then i've got two handguns as well well you understand that we're trying to locate lauren she's I'm, missing and uh you stated that you're willing to do anything to help me I mean, if I can help, I will, but... By helping me, uh, I've asked everyone there, and everyone in the apartment complex has agreed, except you. I mean, it's, it's the lawyer in me, I suppose. I mean, what can I say? I, I, was I'm just, uh, I just needed to know, know, you know the reasoning behind you not doing it. You just... Uh, are worried that I'm going to mess with your firearms if you stand in there? No, I... You see, the way in which they're engaging now, the cop has the ability to use tactics such as common sense or suspicion tactics or, or different parts of the read technique, and they work because DC here, he doesn't want to look like a suspect, so by engaging with him, the cop sets it up that puts pressure that DC will cave in. And this can only happen if they actually engage and talk. So at the present time, without any stroke technique on the floor, then this cop's going to win. I'm always just protective of my space. I mean, I, it's, it's... Did you hurt your nose or something? Where? The red mark on your nose right there. Um, How'd you get that red mark on your nose? Um, is it a mirror? Yeah, I'll show you. How'd you get this down, this mark down here on the chin? Uh, the place I've been picking at. Problem is this hair right here, right in there. I don't know what it is. It gets infected or ingrown, and I, whenever I Just scratch it at it, it starts to get irritated. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, isn't it gold? Off the fly, old DC Snivelly here. He can't come up with something that sounds smooth or smart enough. So some of the things that he comes up with now are just pure comedy gold. So you don't want me looking in your apartment at all? I, if you want to look there and see if Lauren is there, I'll walk you through it. You don't have no problem with that? No. No. Okay, as long as you're present. Yeah. Oh, what a fucking genius. Anyway, it makes you think, like, that's how narcissist and dopey this prick is in that fantasy world, that he never come up with an idea of what he can say if they want to search his apartment and make it sound, like, logical. But, yeah, of course he doesn't because he's a fucking DC. Okay, what kind of car do you own? It's a 97 Geo Prism. Is it out there in the parking lot? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
but I could take you over there and we can walk through together. Sure. That's fine. Okay. I appreciate it. Uh, and you said it that you, the last time you seen Lauren was? Either, either last week or the week before. But it's, it's been think, a few days. Yeah. I, I, like I said, I think it was either the 17th or the 20th. Those were the two days we got put over in Willis. Do you remember anybody saying anything about somebody trying to break into Lauren's apartment on Thursday? Yeah, we we've gone into her apartment and um, let's see, I think it was Joe Joe Karens. He got on her computer and checked her email to see when she'd sent stuff out by us. And there was a message that she sent at ten thirteen, and she said that she thought someone had tried to break into her apartment on Thursday night. Well. Me and you're gonna ride on over there, and I, I'm just gonna walk on in with you and just look around, make sure she ain't in there, and that'll be oh, it. Yeah, certainly. Uh, you have to use a restroom or anything? Cause, all right. Hang on one second. Let me see if I can get somebody to ride with me. Right. You're good to go then. I'll leave this car. I'll be right back. This next part's classic and DC's reaction's even better. Like the cop hits him up and says, you know, give a look at your body just to see if there's any marks or scrapes or scratches. And watch how DC pulls up his t-shirt like about to his belly button and then spins around thinking, yeah, that's good enough. It's gold. Uh, hey, uh, before we go, down on a Thursday night, you don't have no other marks on you, do you? You don't mind lifting up a shirt for me? I mean, if you don't mind. Hmm? <laughs> I told you, man. Oh, that is the look of a guilty DC. You might lift it up again. What's that right there? Huh? I scratched myself in my sleep, I think. You scratched yourself in your sleep? Now, just to give you a glimpse at the intelligence of Sniveller, the old detective hits him up about a certain mark on him, and Sniveller's reply is just f***ing genius. Thing. I had a spider and What was on your back? Did something bite <laughs> you on your back? Oh, Lift it up for me. Turn around this way again. Where did you get bit? I I didn't bite me, but I had a spider on my neck that I swatted. And my not on there, I don't know. That's a big old yeah, that's a big old scratch or something, man. You don't remember what that happened? This cop must be diff because he was attacked by Spider Man. What happens next? Well, at this stage, old Sniveller, he thinks he's home and hose because he's sweet as, because there is no body. And if there's no body, there's no foul. Because as long as the trash is collected, there's no body, there's no foul smell. So the cops, they let old Sniveller go. And what happens next is why this DC became famous in the first place. Well, actually, one of the reasons, because we haven't gone to the second interview yet, but this next part is gold. Yeah, old Snibbles thought it would be a great idea to go and hunt down a news reporter and then go live on TV acting like he's all worried and shit. And what happens in this interview, <laughs> this news interview, is pure gold. Yeah, Lauren was my neighbor. Um, we're just trying to find out where she is at this point. I mean, no one has seen her since Saturday. I mean, the last time anyone heard from her was an email that she sent out, and I mean, no one's heard from her since. And did you see her hang out with anyone at the time, anything like that? I mean, no, no, no one has seen her since Saturday. I haven't seen anything. I mean, you always hear noise outside, but it's just people walking by pretty much. And you, uh, she just recently graduated from Mercer? Yeah, she and I, were we were both JD students. Um, we graduated back in May. Here's something, here's something. You see, Lauren's parents, the Giddings, they would have been freaking the fuck out about now, as anyone would be, and they'd be looking for any kind of information in regards to it. And they definitely have the TV on, and on that TV, you get to see this clown and you're getting your updates from the murderer of your daughter because the cops won't be telling you jack because they never do but this is the way in which you learn about that happened to your daughter and that that is fucking horrible do you know anybody that any enemies you might have had somebody that might want to hurt her no i mean we're, we don't know where she is i mean 
The only thing we can think is that maybe she went out running and someone snatched her. What an absolute genius thing to say when her parents would be watching. Because, I mean, we went, at, we went over, one of her friends had a key, we went inside and tried to see if there was anything amiss, but, I mean, she had a door jam that was sitting right by it, so there was no sign that anyone broke in. I mean, the door was locked when everyone got here, I and mean, we, we just don't know where she is. I mean, this next part is why this DC, DC Snivler, went viral. And this is, <laughs> this is gold, because DC here, he finds out that his J for Genius plan has just come undone, because the cops have found the body, or the torso, in the rubbish. Now, DC doesn't know this at the moment, but he's about to. And it's his reaction, <laughs> his reaction, that somewhat makes him look suspicious. That does bring us to the end of this episode one on Snivels. Uh, to see episode two, just uh, just click the icon here, and it'll take you through so you guys can watch it there. If indeed you want to, if not, then hey, I'll see you guys next episode. Stay safe, all ears. Especially you guys. Stay safe. Kakita.